Hey guys, so I've kept to my word and I haven't made any new canes this week. Just trying to use up some old ones and I'm hiding this week in my office. So it's helping me to be productive. But I, find, I came across this and it's a Makumi Gani cane. And it's just a little bit so there's not a whole lot that I'm going to be able to do with it. So I thought I'd make a couple windmill earrings. I thought I'd show you how to do that. So the first thing I did is I want a backing, so I did black at a number five, and I'm just going to slice up some of this cane on top of here, and then we'll show you how to create the windmill. So I sound funny because, <laughs> okay, I broke my tooth, and um, I got elbowed, so my front tooth got broken. It did not break clean. There's still part of it in the gum. So I have to go in and get that taken care of um, on Wednesday. I'm trying to wait for authorization so that I can get an implant. So that's been crazy. So if my voice and my words sound funny, it's because you don't realize how much you need your front teeth in order to make sound and to form words. So it has not been a fun week in that sense. And then I have a son who's a sheriff. And he's also a paramedic, so he's on their SWAT team and their search and rescue. And I'm going to go ahead and slice this up while I talk. So basically, I'm just going to slice it and put it on here. So basically, um, he got called out. There was a guy that barricaded himself in his house with his wife and kids. Uh, I think a couple kids got out. He had a restraining order on him, so he should not have even been in this house. So how he managed to get there, we don't know. But somebody definitely dropped the ball. And, um, so he was out there shooting at officers, and they ended up having, like, over a hundred officers show up. And they can't just go in and get them, especially when it's a hostage situation. You know, they have to wait. If it was just him, they just sit there and wait for him to get tired. But this was a live rescue, so they had to go in and see if they could save, you know, whoever was in there. And so... Again, he was shooting at officers with an AK-47, and then apparently it stopped for a while, and they went in to try and do a rescue of the wife and whoever else was in there. And that's when he shot at a couple SWAT officers, and he hit them, and so my son had to save their lives, so... He did whatever he had to do, whatever he does, you know, to save their lives. But unfortunately, one of the SWAT members passed away. And it happened to be a friend of his who graduated the academy when he did. And this guy was a, a former Marine. He was in the Afghanistan for the war. Um, married. Three kids. He's like 35 years old. You know, same age as my son. And, um... So it was really tough that he couldn't save his life, and, you know, it's just a, a sad situation. The guy's in war in Afghanistan, makes it through all of that, comes home to die on his streets. You know, it's just, it's just sad all the way around. The other SWAT member's okay. So after that had happened, the guy ended up coming back out of the house, got on the roof, and that's when everybody shot him. So again, my son has to go in and try and save even the suspect's life, even though he's a criminal, you know, as a paramedic, you're there to save them no matter what. And I can imagine how hard that had to have been for him after, you know, him fatally injuring his friend, you know, and now he's got to save this guy's life, you know. So I'm sure with all of these guys, it was a lot of survivor guilt. Um, there were 23 officers that got time off, including my son. They had another SWAT team from another city come in to take care of it for a few days so that, you know, these guys could just deal with their grief. So he's going through a lot. He wasn't doing really good this week. And they've got really, really good sheriff department, you know, where they set him up with um, a psychologist and stuff like that to talk to all these guys and make sure they're okay. So it's not the first time this has happened where he's had to be off like that. But, you know, each time it's just, it's just really hard. So, I have just been totally off my game the entire week, you know, because I worry about him and, you know, it's just, it's just sad all the way around. How that guy got into his house, I don't know. And I don't know if there's going to be a lawsuit, but he shouldn't have been able to get in. But sometimes, unfortunately, people fall through the cracks. 
Okay, so this is done. And um, I feel like it's too thick, so I'm going to run this really quick on a number three on my pasta machine. I don't know if it's really going to change much, but I just want to make sure that they're both even. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to cut it one more time. Make it a nice, perfect cut. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to transfer it on a tile because I don't want to pick it up after it's done. So, yeah, so that was my week this week. So, again, I'm hiding from everybody. I'm just going to stay in here and not think about anything and see if we can get creative. All right, so these are all up. And I don't really worry about these being straight because of what I'm about to do to them. So we're going to find the center point. We're close enough. I think that's about right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to cut into the clay at the corners. So you want to get right on the corner right there. But you don't want to go all the way to the circle. If you go all the way to the circle, then you're going to break your pieces in half. So just get maybe an eighth of an inch um, away from the circle. Okay, and just cut your ends like that. Just make sure it off a little bit. Don't worry about it. My hand's a little shaky today, so I'm trying to keep it as steady as I can. Okay. All right. Let's put it right there. Okay. So easy enough, right? So now I'm going to pick one side, and I always seem to pick up the left. So you're just going to fold that over right there. And you got to make sure that you're picking the left side. If you do the left side, you need to pick up all left sides all the way around. You know, and if you do the right, obviously uh, you grab the right side. And I want this kind of straight. So, you don't want to go too thin on these, but you also don't want to go really thick because you'll have a hard time bending them. And this is really old cane. I'm surprised it's not cracking on me. Okay. So, I always sand all my work, so I'm not really worried if my ends moved a little bit because they're going to be sanded but the more perfect you can get it at the beginning the less sanding you'll have to do so I'm going to try and do that okay so now we're going to go to this one and we're going to pick up the left on this side Two more. This, this tile doesn't want to move. Okay, so I'm going to make sure all those are down nice and straight. And then I'll just take the ball tool and I'm just going to push it down in the middle here. And 
And if you want, when you make yours, you could also take that um, backing piece and you can texture it with like a texture sheet or a rubber stamp. And that way you'll get a nice little pattern here. And then if you really wanted to, you could take mica powder and just, you know, spread on that pattern for it to really stick out. So, I didn't do that with these. I'm just going to throw in a couple little dots here. Just for the heck of it. Okay. So now we've got what? We have orange, gray. I think we have a little bit of gold in this. That's what I'm going to use for the center. Mm. Or I can just use straight black. Or I could use orange. Hmm. Got a couple couple ways to do this. Let's see if I have any orange out here. And I have no orange in front of me. And I don't feel like looking for any. So we're going to see what this looks like. I don't know how to make orange. I think it's red and yellow. I don't have any red out here or nothing. So we're just going to try gold. If I don't like it, I can pick it off later. Okay. This might be a little too big. These might be perfect right here. Just gonna use these two. We're just gonna roll it in our hands. Make a nice little ball. Okay, and I'm just gonna squish it. Squish it. Because I will drop it if I use my own fingers and did not want to pick up. There we go. Put that right in the center. I'm just going to push that down. When I want it to pick up, I can't get it to pick up. Okay, so now I'll just put that in the oven. And the reason I do it on the tile is because I usually don't lift it after it's already on there. Because I don't want to distort the leaves. But just so you can see what it looks like, I will lift it up. So you got yourself a little windmill, and then after it comes out of the oven, I'll drill a hole in one of these, and it'll basically hang like that. Um, I do have one that I made a long time ago, and this is just a standard silver and pearl. So basically that's what they'll look like. Ah, and I dropped one, so one's going to have to do. So they're kind of fun. Let's see if I put it on a white background if it's easier to see it. I'm not really sure. So basically, there you go. So I hope that was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll be back to be making canes soon. But for now, adios. Have a wonderful night. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.